of the woodland. Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, showing rare courage in the face of disaster. In the air. On horseback. Or in a screaming squad car. Ranger Bill, his mind alert, a ready smile, unswerving, loyal to his mission. And all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. <laughs> Every time I think of what happened to Stumpy, when we get involved in this problem, I could have a laughing fit. <laughs> <laughs> the old boy got caught in the middle and jumped right from the frying pad into the fire. Not too long ago, a large truck caravan came through Knotty Pine. The trucks carried an extremely valuable cargo of archaeological finds that came from an expedition working in the Near East. It was our misfortune to have one of the trucks break down in Knotty Pine. I say misfortune because of what happened following the break town. Alexander Peabody was in charge of the caravan, and he met us as we drove up to find out what we could do to help. It's the story... The Vanishing Mummy. There's the caravan ahead. Wow! Wow! Look at the size of those trucks, will you? Yeah, they're big ones, all right. Six of them, too. Now, let's find out what we can do, uh, if anything. Right. fellow in the business suit must be Peabody. Yeah, I guess so. He's going to stretch his neck if he gets down in that engine any further. Uh, Mr. Peabody? What do you want? Can't you see I'm busy? Uh, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, Ranger. You're Ranger Jefferson, I presume. That's right. Uh, what can we do for you? You can start this truck, if you're a mechanical genius. <laughs> I'm afraid that's a little out of my line. Yes, yes, of course. <laughs> Sam, have you found out what's wrong? Uh, no, sir, I'm no mechanic, Mr. Peabody, and that's what this job needs, a real motor doctor. Is that all you can do, drive a truck? If that's what I'm paid for. I can fix minor things, but that's all. Oh, all right, I suppose you're right. I should have insisted that they send a mechanic along. Uh, do you have a good mechanic in town, uh, Mr. Jefferson? Uh, we sure have. Uh, Henry, run back into town and see if Blackie's home, will you? Sure, right away. Thanks. Well, Mr. Peabody, we'll just have to wait and see what Blackie can do. Oh, very well. That's one thing I'm not very good at. That's so? Well, sure comes in handy at times, uh, knowing how to wait. It might be for you yokels out here, but a busy man like myself hasn't time to wait. Uh, perhaps we yokels can teach you a thing or two about keeping your blood pressure down. You'll live longer, you know, and be a lot happier. Oh, how long is it going to take to get this blackie fellow out here? Just as long as it takes to make the ten-mile trip at a safe and sane speed. Haven't you found out what's wrong yet? You've been working on that engine 15 minutes. Well, sir... As I see it, it takes them a long time to put this engine together at the factory. And, well, it's going to take me quite a while to find out what's wrong with it. Unless you can make it talk and tell me where it's got a bellyache. <laughs> That's a good one, Blackie. Sam, stop talking so that man can work. Now, listen here, mister. If you're going to get all head up and nasty about this, well, then I'm not going to fool with it. 
Maybe you need a little fixing yourself. <sighs> All right. Go ahead and work. Well, now, that's right tolerable of you. There's a nice log right over yonder. Why don't you go and set a spell while I look at this here engine's tonsil? Huh? All right, I said go to work. But get the job done as fast as you can. That man, why, he'll give me the fidgets if he don't leave me alone. Here, hold that light down here for me, will you, Henry? Or have, uh, have you got the jumping nerves, too? <laughs> Not me. Uh, that, that Mr. Peabody sure ain't enjoying life. No, sir. Why, uh, he's gonna jump right out of his skin. His skin will probably be a lot happier without having a, a Mexican jumping being like him to live with. Bill, uh, you feed me them wrenches? Because I gotta crawl inside this thing and see what I can see. Uh, sure, Blackie. I'll hand the wrenches to you. Uh, I wonder what he's got inside these trucks. It makes him such a ball of fire. Yeah, I've been wondering the same thing. You're not alone. It must be awfully viable stuff. He has some kind of Egyptian collection. What do you mean, Egyptian collection? Well, you know, mummies and pottery and statues and that sort of junk. It's supposed to be pretty valuable, but I can't see why. I agree with you, Sam. Can't see why you should get all head about that. Have you found the trouble yet, Blackie? Yep. Yeah, what's the verdict? Well... Looks like there's a defective crankshaft. The motor will have to come out to be repaired. Uh, the boss ain't going to be happy when he hears about this. Yep, I reckon. He'll get double fidgets now. <laughs> I'll have a talk with him about it and see if I can help him solve his problem. Of all the dumb fool luck, this is it. I have to be at the next museum tomorrow. I can't wait for this truck to be repaired. Can't you transfer the load to the other trucks? Divide it up between them? Well, the most valuable part of the whole exhibit is on that truck. And it can't be wedged into the others like a like sardines in a can. Um, what exhibit are you talking about? Why, these trucks carry the latest archaeological finds from Egypt to Palestine and all the rest of the countries in that area. That truck contains the contents of a pharaoh's tomb, including his mummy. It's worth a lot of money, the whole exhibit is. You'll notice the trucks are equipped with burglar alarms. Uh, why don't you let us guard the exhibit for you while you take the rest of the trucks to your destination? Oh, would you do that? We'd be glad to, Mr. Peabody. Oh, that's a big load off my shoulders for the time being. I will have to get a truck from town to unload the big one and haul the contents to a warehouse where you can guard it safely. You'll have to make several trips to unload a trailer this large. Then the defective tractor can be towed to the garage and repaired. I'll leave Sam here so we can drive on when the engine's running again. I uh, thought we could guard the trailer right here, tow it into town. Oh, I don't think one of your tow trucks could do the job. That's one of the largest diesel tractors made, and that has a tough time pulling that trailer. Uh, you're right. If we got bad weather, we'd have difficulty guarding it. I'll go back to town, send out a couple of men to guard while I get a truck to unload the trailer. You can continue your trip if you want to. Oh, no, I'm staying right here until this cargo is safely transferred and under lock and key and guard. Blackie, is that you? Yes, Frida. It's Where have me. you been all this time, Blackie? How do you expect me to keep the food hot when you show up half an hour late for supper? It's a fine how do you do when a woman tries to cook decent for a man and he never shows up on Frida, time. Frida, take it easy, will you? So happens I've landed a big diesel engine to repair. I'll make a nice profit on it. Well, that's different. Why don't you say so in the first place? Do I eat now or later? It's coming Hiya, Dad. What did the Rangers come here for? Junior, how many times must I tell you not to bang the door? I'm sorry, Mom. I'll try and remember. What did they come for, huh, Dad? 
or there's a big diesel broke down out on the North Highway, or the Rangers came to get me to see if I could get it running again. Did you? Nope. She got to come into the shop and be fixed. It's an important job because, well, they've got a mummy on it. A mummy? You mean like one of those that comes from Egypt? Yep. Same thing. Wow. Can I see it? Don't think so, Junior. It's being locked up in a warehouse, guarded by the rangers. Boy, oh boy. It sure must be something important, or they wouldn't go to all that trouble. I'm going over and tell Ray. Okay, son. Be sure you're home by dark. Sure, Dad. Land sakes will wonders never cease. I think I'm going to think. Uh, what's the matter with you? Junior closed the door quietly. He remembered. <laughs> Is that all? <laughs> For a moment, I thought the Egyptian mummy had walked through the door. <laughs> made to no mummy. <laughs> Boy, new shirt travels fast. You said it, Henry. Mighty big of our boss to volunteer to guard that fossil, but I ain't available. <laughs> Why not, Stumpy? You're not afraid. <laughs> I'm not afraid. Just a wee bit uh, cautious, that's all. Uh, who knows what's going to happen, baby sitting with that thing all bandaged up. <laughs> My old timer, I fixed it so you could have the midnight to four in the morning gone. Well, that's a good time. You can get nice and cozy with the mummy. Maybe even shake hands with it. Now, you see here, you young whippersnappers. I ain't gonna do no such thing. Well, uh, leastwise, not unless I can have old Betsy with me to sort of keep me company. Well, that's agreeable with me. How come you changed mine? Well, I don't want you fellas to get the idea that I'm scared. Because ain't. Just careful, that's all. Just... Careful. Dad says the truck has nothing but old stuff they dug up out of the sand. Boy, I'd sure like to see the mummy. Wouldn't you? Yeah. But it's locked up and the rangers are guarding it. Yeah, but do you know where they're guarding it? Some warehouse... I'd say it's got to be by the river, because that's where all the warehouses are. Right. It shouldn't be hard to find which one it is. I don't think so. I should call my folks, too. Let's go down by the river and see if we can find the mummy. Those warehouses aren't hard to get into. What if we get caught? We won't in the dark. How about it? Barn sure is big. That trailer load looked big until it was put in here. Now it looks like nothing standing over there in the corner. <laughs> That's right. Hey, this mummy case sure is a beautiful piece of work. Mm -hmm. Boy, sure wish I could read the Egyptian writing on here. Mm, you can almost tell what they're saying by studying the pictures. Yeah, maybe some other time. Right now, I'm tired. Why don't you go on home, hit the hay, Henry? Are you sure you don't want company? What do I need company for? I can always talk with the mummy. Yeah, sure you can. <laughs> don't forget to wake me up when you come home so I can help you and Grey Wolf, uh, you know, give Stumpy the treatment. Shh. Shh. Huh? What, what'd you hear? I thought I heard something. Like a window sliding open. Oh, no. Oh, Ray. I douse the light. Sure. the place, Ray. It's the only one left. Yeah. See if you can find the light switch. Wait till I shine the light around. Hey, there it is. The mummy case. We found it. Oh, boy, we sure did. Let's take a look and, and get out of here quick. When they get closer, 
Turn on the lights and cut off their retreat. Okay. Let's get out of here. Hold it, fellas. No one's going to hurt you. Bill, Henry, are you going to pinch us? Relax. We'll talk this over. Boy, was I scared. Yeah, me too. Hello in there. Anybody home? Oh, this place is getting busy. Uh, come on in. Uh, at last I've caught up with Peabody and the mummy. <laughs> you uh, haven't caught up with anything yet, mister. What's your name? What do you want? Well, I'm Bentley Morgan. Everybody calls me Bent for short. I offered to buy this mummy and the case from Peabody several days back, and he wouldn't sell it to me. Now I'm going to make him sell to me. Ben Morgan, I've heard of you. You're a, you got a big business out on the coast. Yeah, that's right, son. Morgan Enterprises Incorporated. Well, what do you mean you're going to make Peabody sell the mummy? Oh, don't take me wrong now. No rough stuff. I'm just that I'm going to make him such a big fat offer, he can't resist it. Well, that's your business, Bent. Right now you're trespassing. Peabody isn't here. No, no, not again. <laughs> Will he be back here? I couldn't say. The truck carrying this cargo broke down, being repaired. Jan, by my dad. Uh, Peabody left the truck driver here to bring this part of the collection along as soon as the truck's running. What? Do you know where he went? No. Sorry I don't. Uh, his driver is staying at the hotel. Yeah, that's where I'll have to stay, too. I'll talk to the driver in the morning. I hope Peabody shows up. I've got to have that mummy for my private collection. I won't take no for an answer. Good night. What do you suppose that's all about? I don't know. Now, uh, what are you two young fellas doing snooping around here, huh? Oh, we just wanted to see the mummy. Honest, my dad told us about it. Please don't tell our folks or we'll get into a peck of trouble. We just wanted to look. Honest. Well, I believe you. Now, you fellas better run along home and stay out of places where you don't belong. Or someday you'll get into serious trouble. It's always the smart thing to ask permission if you want to see something that's under lock and key. And uh, I kind of guess you fellas are disobeying your parents, too. That's not smart either, nor is it honest. Yes, sir. Would you fellas steal money? Oh, no, sir. That's breaking the law, and it's not honest. All right. You're being dishonest by disobeying your parents. You're just as wrong as the person who steals money. It's all sin. We won't do it again. We're sorry. Okay. Now run along home. Henry will walk up town with you because he's going home too. I'll be home as soon as Stumpy relieves me, Henry. Okay, Bill. Let's go, fellas. Are you uh, going to be all right, old timer? Well, I reckon so. I'll be uh, glad to get a partner for you. Oh, yeah. The fellas have ribbed me black and blue about being scared of a mummy. Now you go on, skedaddle. Okay. Good night. Well, Betsy, old girl, it's just you and me now. And uh, the mummy... Why not go inside warehouse to scare Stumpy? Because it's too obvious. The noises won't sound like they're coming from the mummy case. This way will be under the floor, which is old and has cracks in it. Yeah. Stumpy's a dead shot. Now don't worry about that. He just wants his rifle for comfort. He's no trigger-happy novice, you know. Yeah, you're right. When do we start? As soon as we get under the mummy case. And that'd be plenty soon now. Well, here it is. How to give the old boy the business. Young <laughs> hey, feller, 
neighbors think they can scare me, eh? They must be in the other room making spook sounds. All right, you young whippersnappers, come out before I bounce a rifle ball off your head. the shivers now. Oh, hey, listen to that. There ain't no money in this thing. It's from empty. Empty? Come on. Let's get up there in the double and find out what's happened to the mummy. This is a fine how do you do. I haven't got enough problems with what you knuckleheads have to add to them by allowing the mummy to be stolen right out from under your very noses. And what's even worse, you have an incompetent old man standing guard who admits he dozed off and also left the room. And to add to all that, you fellows were playing games under the warehouse that only two-year-old children would think of. Oh, what a miserable thing happened to me when that junk of a truck broke down in this hick town full of dumb yokels. Well, Mr. Peabody, are you finished blowing off steam? I am not. But there aren't enough words left in the English language to express my disgust. I'm going to inform your superior. Who is he? Colonel Anders. And his office is at Central City. And he's already been informed. Why haven't you been fired, then? Because the colonel knows that there's something radically wrong here other than an old man and a few jokesters. I'm wondering, Mr. Peabody, if the mummy was in the case when it came here. What? Are you casting aspersions on my integrity? I merely asked a question. You're trying to shift the blame and throw the spotlight off yourselves. Pretty clever. But it won't work. Now that you've added insult to injury, I'm going to get nasty, too. Go right ahead. You certainly are awfully smart for a man in your position. I could sue you because you allowed the mummy to be stolen. Mr. Peabody, perhaps we were out of order in giving the business to one of our fellow rangers. But no one is sure the mummy's been stolen. Why, that's pretty The hot. cargo in the warehouse was under constant guard. If the mummy had been stolen, it would have been pretty obvious. People don't walk around Naughty Pine every day of the week carrying mummies. <laughs> you tell him, Sonny. What's more, I never said I was sound asleep. Just because I dozed off for a minute or two here and there doesn't mean someone could walk in and steal your pile of bandages. I've heard enough. And you haven't heard the last of this. What's more, I don't want you or your men near that cargo. I have the sheriff's deputies guarding it. I hope they can do a better job. What are we going to do, Bill? How are we going to find the mummy? Well, I have a few ideas. You think Bentley Morgan have anything to do with this? No. He couldn't afford to have adverse publicity like that. And besides, I don't think he'd stoop so low, even though he wants the mummy badly. You don't think the two boys fetched it out? No, oh, of course not, Stumpy. Let's go down to the warehouse and have a look at the case. How can we do that? Cal's men are guarding it. I'll show you if someone got the mummy out, then we should be able to get in. The deputies are at the other end of the warehouse. Let's get over there and have a look quickly. Don't make no noise now. Okay. Now let's take a look. Open the cover. Me? Go on, Henry. Open it. Sure. Uh oh. Uh, 
Get behind these crates before they see us. Hey, there ain't no place for me to hide. Get in money box. <laughs> then they poured in a storm. See what the Rangers can't take care of this. Have you two men seen Bill Jefferson and his men? No, sir. They wouldn't be. Why, what a here. mess we're in. Is that so? Someone said they saw four Rangers heading this way. Are you sure you haven't seen them? Yes, sir. Positive. <laughs> what was that? Sounded like a sneeze. Amazing deduction, Watson. Open that mummy case. It came from there. The mummy case? Yes. Oh, never mind. I'll do it myself. Stumpy Jenkins? <laughs> well, Mr. Jenkins, <laughs> fancy meeting you here. <laughs> how, does, how does it fit? <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Peabody, <laughs> you caught us red-handed. <laughs> but I, I must confess I'm confused. I expected an angry barrage of bullet-loaded words instead of a hearty laugh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the funniest thing I've seen in years. <laughs> well, no, that could be. I was desperate, you know. And of all the people to find me in this coffin, it had to be you. Gentlemen, I, I, I've come to ask you to, to accept my apologies for the nasty things I've said and, and the way I've abused you. I... I was wrong. What happened, Mr. Yeah. Peabody? Yeah. Well, you, you see, I have in my pocket here a, a cable from the expedition. The scientist in charge tells me that this mummy case is a decoy. Well, they've just found the real one, and there's a mummy in that. The decoy was used in hopes of, well, fooling anybody who should try to rob the tomb of its riches. Well, knock me over with a feather. I... I intend to make a public apology for the wrong I've done you, gentlemen. And Stumpy, <laughs> you can have this mummy case as a gift and souvenir. <laughs> Over my dead body! <laughs> <laughs> I think the old-timer had enough to do with mummy cases without taking one home with him to put in the parlor. So we put it in the museum in Naughty Pine. Well, see you next week for more adventure with... <laughs>